still we still like to propose moving the K house, um, moving the Pigeon Hill schoolhouse to the K house property. Uh, in talking with Elton, uh, our lifetime trustee, my I was corrected that our original discussion was that it wouldn't necessarily be on the front of the building, it would be more towards the back of the building. Um, and it would be more towards the back of the building um, to kind of help with that eyesore uh, that you had mentioned. Um, and also um, the fact is that we, again, we would propose that we would have a plan as far as making sure the building was secure, there were windows, there were paints, there were, you know, the building was painted, there was a door to secure the building um, while we worked on the grants this year. There's three grants um, that I've researched that we can apply for this year uh, to help us in that effort, as well as we'd like to work in coordination with the Industrial Preservation Committee, um, um, for which I'm a member, and uh, work towards preserving and protecting that last remaining Patricia, you just said something that this was not accepted at town meeting. The original, that that the agreement when the town, again, I wasn't here in 1985. So this is in your packet. It, sh it states on March 9th, 1985 at town meeting. But when I looked at the town reports, there was never, you know, to clarify, there was never a, I think it was, from what I can tell, it was the selectmen who decided to accept the property, not, it wasn't like put to a town warrant to accept. Did you, you have to look at the minutes of the town meeting, not the town report. Right. So Wendy, maybe Wendy could check the 1985 town meeting minutes. That's, just because something is in the town report, uh, the warrant is in the town report, it may not have been listed there as a warrant item, but the way I read this, it states that at the March 9th, 1985 town meeting, it, the town voted to accept the Mary Kay Wilder House and one piece of land to be used as a museum. So that can be clarified with the meeting minutes of the town meeting. With that. And, and if I may give Elton a chance to speak. Elton, do you recall how that happened in 1985? It was a long time ago. Oh. I was Bill. I speak? Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Greta Copeland, way back, wanted to give that to the building and the, and the property to the historical society. Well, the historical society didn't want to take it because they didn't want to take that much of a responsibility at the time that it was small and the big book the church. Um, so she asked if it would be possible to give it to the town for the use of the society. And so the Swartman agreed. So we take the town meeting. And it was given to and it was voted to give the building the property to the town. Town accepted it. Uh, for the use of the historical society. Um, and beyond that, uh, and you have to take my word for it because everything was destroyed when the Smith took over from Charlie Burr because uh, she threw everything away. Uh, all the records that was in that file cabinet. And, uh, so there's nothing that, so you people don't know anything about it. But she wanted, if anything happened to the historical society, the building is to be sold and the money given to uh, uh, scholarship fund for an Oxford, someone in Oxford, high school student in Oxford, for nursing. That's what this said. Was that on there? Yeah, that's all. What so you said that's is all, all in here. It's oh. all in here. That's what Patricia gave us. Okay. Well, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about that. But so, I, because I, I can hear, I can't hear good, so. Oh. <laughs> Getting old, you know. Um, um, 
Yeah, so what, uh, so you don't want uh, us to use the property to put anything on? Is that? No, that's not what we were talking about. I asked the question when Patricia at, Patricia stated that this was probably not voted on by the town to accept. Only because I don't see oh. a signature on there as well. So I don't it is on here. Yep. On the very last page. Well, it's signed like by a, uh, Vivian Farrello. The, the that, was, that was an agreement, that was number nine that was added on, but what I said was the town meeting minutes would show that this was approved and uh, that's what this is saying, that it was approved. I'll talk louder. Um, Thank you. <laughs> according to this, it is saying that um, it was voted on and accepted by the townspeople at the March 1985 town meeting. Yeah. So the town did accept that uh, building to be used for the historical society. That, that's okay. what's written here. And it can be confirmed by looking at the 1985 town meeting minutes, which I'm sure Wendy will pull out and, and confirm that. Maybe what I'm not clear about then is um, the discussion of the last meeting um, was that it having to go to a special town meeting for us to put the building, the Pigeon House Schoolhouse, when the whole purpose of the K House was for a museum. And we support all of Oxford's historic artifacts. Um, being the last schoolhouse, um, you know, and, and also being an advocate to support a historic preservation committee in order to prevent future buildings like the one room schoolhouse from disappearing from our children and grandchildren in our history was to, I mean, we have, we've been offered a gift. We have, as a historical society, we have no other place to put it other than at the K House. And um, so there was some mention at the last meeting about maybe the need for a special town meeting. Um, and I guess Adam can uh, sure. describe what the town lawyer advised, because I think that that's what it's doing. Yeah, I mean, in short, in short, it was, uh, there's concern if we need to go to a town meeting vote or not. Um, where it's a donation, the town can, the selectmen have the authority according to town meeting to accept a donation, whether that be you know, real property or financial and so forth. So, um, however, the selectmen always have the authority, even though it's granted by the town meeting vote, they can always refer back to town meeting if they feel it's something that should be considered by town meeting, not just the board. So, input that the board gave. Have a yeah, I had a qu kind of question, comment on this as well, um, from the perspective of being on the Preservation Society. Um, so what you have, um, it sounds like you have a piece of paper that is saying that the town of Oxford has already given the Historical Society the ability to have that piece of property for um, preservation of our history here in the town of Oxford. And you have a building that's a one-room schoolhouse that very, there's very few um, left in the state of Maine, and granted it may not be in the best shape, but um, you have the opportunity to put it on the property that um, this group already has um, received permission to use for that um, specific purpose at no cost to the town, and simply looking at um, approval from the select board to go ahead and start a process to um, have somebody take a look at the building to see if it's even, um, there's an ability to structurally move the building. They can't start that process without approval from you folks. Um, and there's no cost to the town. They already have permission to use that property. It appears that their um, setbacks are met to be able to put that on this piece of property. They already um, discussed that starting a plan, so necessarily wouldn't be an eyesore, but I would say an eyesore is really subjective because certainly when I worked at the, um, over at the uh, rec center, I often heard that the building was an eyesore and the ramp behind it was an eyesore. So I think that's very subjective to what people um, may believe is an eyesore or not. But it gives an opportunity, and, and, um, and Patricia touched on, you have a, a school sitting right behind this property, and I would bet the majority of the students in, in our elementary school do not understand what a one-room schoolhouse was. And if they have the ability to put it over here um, on the property and move it at no cost to the town of Oxford and the taxpayers and bring it up to um, 
what would meet um, you know the required requirements to be able to have people go in, share a history, have um, certainly our students and other individuals learn about there was a one room schoolhouse in the town of Oxford, this one being used, I believe, um, up into the 1940s. I think we should take advantage of that and um, talking about sending it to a special town meeting, now you're talking about really for, I'm not sure what the reasoning would be, incurring a, um, a cost to our taxpayers. When certainly we've already established, they're asking to use the property exactly for what the town of Oxford has already allowed them to, to use. The other the question would be, what is the cost of a special town meeting? And what is the timeline? Because they are under a deadline to have an agreement and be able to get somebody in to look at that building. And at the cost of them to have somebody with the building. And it really wouldn't behoove them to spend that money um, on having somebody look at the building if the timeline of a special town meeting isn't, always, isn't even going to be viable with their timeline that they're, they've been given. So, question and comments and question there. I think the question of going to a special town meeting is, who is the building being donated to? Because if the building is being donated to the town, only the voters can accept that donation, not the selectmen. So that's where that came from. If that building is donated to the, can you hear me? <coughs> no, I was talking earlier. If, if, if you the, can hear her, Elton? If the building is donated, the reason that came up is because if the building is donated to the town, it has to go to a town meeting or special town meeting because only voters can accept a donation uh, of uh, property, Leander Building. If it's donated to the society, historical society, then it would not because they, it's not donated to the town. So that's why we wanted clarification from the lawyer. So that's why where that question came up. Well, I know that they wanted to the donate, they wanted to give it to the society. They want, they mentioned that quite a few years ago, but there's no way that uh, Evan would part with it. So the girls said wait till he passed. Uh, so now they have approached us and said that they'd like us to take it. There again, I want, I would like to see, you know, how structural it is, and if we place it, uh, we talked about it years ago when they first brought it up, and we wanted to place it in back of the house facing the school, so the uh, kids could uh, see a one-room schoolhouse, which uh, this is the only one left, uh, and. Uh, uh, and I'd like to place it so it could be moved. If the if the town had to sell, it, then it could be moved easily. Not not having a, the foundation oh, under it and all that. To uh, have it so it could be moved and moved to another site if the town would like it there. Or because if anything happens to the society, every all the artifacts has to go to another society. Which would be a bonus view, not only Paris, so something like that. Uh, and maybe that could go with it, you know what I mean? Uh, but otherwise, that, that, that's, that's it. The <laughs> 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 question is Has the Federal family considered donating just that piece of property with a building set on it? So it could be on the same. Where originally started? It's my understanding is no, the answer is no. They're, they're going to sell it. They're going to sell it. They're going to tear Everything's down. It's under contract now. Both the farmhouse across the road and anything on the other yeah. property will be removed. So it's too bad that we couldn't have that. I know. The, the other question is how soon is it going to be moved? And have you got the money to move it? We have the money to move it. You do. We have the donor to we'll take care of it. Uh, if we don't come up with the money. I mean, we're, we're raising money to a book. We're all set in that, in that field. Yeah. So you and I, I, as I said, I go on an eyesore. I, I take you around town and show you a lot of them. 
I don't want them. <laughs> so if we get it over here, we got to fix it up. Or I don't want it there myself. That's that's the way I feel. I've been in the society for long well, years. Too many. Well, I guess my question was. If that's the way that really reads, that it's their land and they can do what they want with it, and if they're willing to give it to them and they're willing to do it, it's not going to cost them money. Why are they here? It's the town's land. It's not their land. The town owns. I thought it was the society. Land. No, the, t the town owns the land and the building, and it's for the use of the historical society. For our use. We pay. It's for their use, but yeah. the town owns it. Yeah. And the caretakers. Well, uh, yes I and no. I, I mean, we pay all the utilities over there, other than you do have us on your insurance policy because it's town property. But we pay all the utilities. We pay usually, uh, other than this recent with the window um, offer from the town. Uh, we didn't approach the town. It was, you know, and obviously we need to take care of that. Other than the window situation, we have always maintained the society, kept it up. We've had volunteers that do the painting and cleaning, and so we well, haven't been a burden to the town. We haven't asked the town for any support well, of that building. No, yeah, we weren't. Yes, we we were the town pays. Oh, uh, sure. We paid half and the town paid half for certain of the town pay half to sit on the roof. But that, I think that's the only money we ever asked from the town. And actually, the way, way it's in the thing that the town takes care of the building for us. But, but we don't feel that that should be either. I mean, we're using it. We put a lot of other money in there. I mean, no. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. What's the actual footprint of that building? The, the schoolhouse that you want to move? How big is it? 20 by 25. 20 by 25. 25 long, 20 to the front, and 25 length. Good. And it's probably, what did we say, 20 feet high? Maybe. I mean, again, we may not even be able to move it, but we don't know if that we can. We don't want to go down that expense without getting some idea from the town that, yes, we can. We have a place to put it. Well, we can move it because they can take the, the way they do it now. They take the top right off and go move it two sections to the back now. So, but uh, if they could move it, one piece would be great. <laughs> So just a clarifying question to what Selectman Bayer said. So it's my understanding that the building has been actually given to the historical societies, not the town of Oxford. And the question then, I believe why they're in front of you, is to basically get further permission to continue to use the piece of property for historical um, uh, well, initiatives and, and put, that, put that building on it. Well, and the agreement does clearly say that any changes or modifications to the property require us to come to the selectmen mm -hmm. and have this discussion. So that is clearly what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I felt that it's really up to the selectmen to uh, to say whether we use it or not. I don't. It's already been given to town, that thing. So it's really up to you folks to say whether we can do it or not. And as far as I'm concerned, it's up to you guys. I think the question is, is it going to be donated to the historical society? Yes. So we don't get it fixed. <clears throat> so we're not accepting the bill. No. It's owned by the historical society. No, you're just going to grant them permission to put it on. Because it's town property. So you supervise this album? He is. <laughs> he doesn't. That's all I can do now. That's all you can do. <laughs> so did you say that it was not going to go on this site property now? It's going to go someplace else? It's going to go towards the back, right? Is that what we talked about? Yeah, we want to put it in back, facing the school. So it'll be in back of the, of the, uh, well, the house, the meeting room, uh, the garage. Uh, it's why would there's the most room there? Does that meet all the setbacks, putting it back there? It does. Still has the 50 foot, 50 foot from the side of the building, and maybe even a little more because of the back of the building. 
But again, we don't exactly know where the pins are to what you, the town donated to the school. Yeah, I did know once, but they've, they've been run over. They have find them because moving snow, they puts everything in the ground. So. But there was some pins out there at one time. But you don't know if it will fit there because you don't but know where the pins are, but it will fit over on this side. Yeah. Who's the room on the back, though? I know there was.
who we left out <coughs> them. We inspected all 200 pieces, but we found that 28 of them were bad. But before that, the work was sent, they actually remember it's in already, they were waiting. So we replaced them, put everything back together, and uh, quality definitely improved like, on the airport. That's much better. I mean, we had single digits, now we have almost like, 0 0.1, so 10 times. So that problem was fixed. Then, um, situation with the parts is called like something <coughs> which is supposed to be like a shelf item, like for example, like boulder five horse motor, electrical motor. Uh, we are ready for certain bonds now. Okay. So like looking what's going on and like uh, looking at the statistic what's failing, uh, I really would like to have some stuff on the shelf while I can, because I really don't see any improvement like this day. Uh, with the equipment for all of those. It's one thing, but the thing is, some stuff is getting obsolete already. Like, uh, we lost the heat pump at the electrical pump station. Uh, we need it because it's generating a lot of heat which needs to be taken out. So, uh, that unit was obsolete. So we had, instead of repairing, we actually had to replace the whole unit, which was not very cheap. <laughs> so, uh, that's where we're standing, like we passed all the testing. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I'm working with uh, DEP on reducing the testing. That's like, um, I will inform you when people, we will actually came to the, we will get the results. And they will say, yes, guys, like you can reduce the testing like the neighbors. Because we do way more than normal. As I said, like, uh, I reply for the permit. It's <coughs> every five years, I have to reply for the permit. Uh, I replied February 2019. So three years we're working on the whole permit and like silence on the EP side. Um, so that's pretty much what we're standing. We're doing good and my dream is garage for our equipment. <laughs> Which I will be mentioning most probably was not the budget here. So talking about uh, town office pump station. So it's consists of two parts pretty much like one Actually, three. Uh, one is <coughs> two parts outside. It's a flat well where all the stuff is coming into and where the uh, pumps and flows are mount, uh, mounted. And other part is the dry pit with the check valves. And third part, which is control panel. Control panel, uh, generator receptacle, and transfer switch which is in this building, in the basement. So if the building will be sold, this stuff needs to be moved. Uh, I already have talked with Flanders, Flanders Electric. Uh, I haven't heard anything back about the cost. But I, <coughs> I explained what needs to be done like. It seems like we can use the same panel, we don't need another enclosure, but transfer switch, the one we have in the uh, basement, is a type which indoor use only. So it will need a separate enclosure for it, which it will be cheaper than, like, for example, to buy the old weather, like Lima 4 transfer switch. Um, so other thing is we have radio and we have antenna on the top of the building. Um, usually, I believe it talks to the repeater on the element mill, and then the repeater sends it back to the treatment plant. So uh, we will need to do something like to actually raise this antenna. If you will move the panel, you will have to raise the antenna somehow. So, and I thought like, well, you will have to bring power anyway to the, to the new panel. You can't feed it from here, you will be feeding it locally. Uh, you will have meter, and if you will put the private pole and bring power to that private pole, you can set up antenna right on top of it, like, and I think that will be enough uh, to actually, so it can talk like, to the feeding line. Uh, I cannot give you any numbers right now, but it can be done, uh, I mean it would be cheap and like some other things would have to be like, I mean ideally we will do it when the school is out, because of the school will be in like, kids will be there, uh, we'll have to arrange the bypass pumping and like all that type of stuff, but it's doable, all this is doable. Can you say where would it be 
put again? Uh, right there where the wet belt. They will, uh, there was such thing, it's a stainless steel piece it's called the uh, mini bars, and they will build up actually from there. We already have some uh, uh, junction boxes, which is hidden under the rocks. You can't see them, like they're hidden in the plastic rocks. So like, pretty much they will be building it up and place the panel there, and the meter, and the generator, receptacle. And do you currently stock any, like a, a spare pump or for the other station? I have some spare stuff, but uh, I mean, we need to replace uh, some PLC parts, like input, output panel, electronic, down the uh, We ordered it in March. I was promised May, I was promised, like lately it's the end of August, I feel like. So, this we are standing, where we are standing, it's, it's pretty bad. One of the things that we had talked about is putting together a list of things, like where items that would need to be replaced, and then he'd get some prices, come to you folks to request money from the from the reserve account for the sewer department, and yeah. then just place an order now, and then six, seven months when the stuff comes in, we'll, you know, we yeah. have some on the shelf. It's, I mean, it will be like big items, like a couple of electric motors, they're like 800 bucks. But like, the problem is, three months and I'm still waiting. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Madam Town Manager's report. pass along. We had a uh, building inspection actually just yesterday on the, the building. Actually a commercial building inspector came through and walked through. Um, that went well. And just uh, it's like three things that, you know, three things were pointed out. Uh, one, uh, the roof probably is going to need to be on the list of replacements within the next five years. Um, the HVAC system uh, needs, uh, needs to speak to the vendor who's been ma maintaining the HVAC system. Everything seems to be in working order. Just um, you know, to get more of a better idea of what the status of that HVAC system, and, you know, for the air conditioning, what the status of it is for uh, you know its lifespan and so forth. Because uh, that wasn't 100% clear to the inspector. Other than that, the, the building uh, structurally he thought was in good condition. Um, outside, there was some cosmetic things, you know, typical stuff, you know, typical maintenance items, you know, trim around windows. Need, you know, there's a couple places that need some touch up or resealing and that kind of stuff. But overall. You know, it was all you know, all good feedback. Um, he's going to give me a written report sometime in you know, the next couple of days, um, so I can share that with the board. Uh, right now, we're on track as far as funding goes. That the bond and so forth, everything has moved forward, so we're we're all set there. Um, tentative closing date of July 15th. So we're chugging right along. Selectman item, recognition of Ron, Ronald Kugel's service to the town of Oxford. Or did you want to go there? Nope. I think you can do a presentation. Okay. Can you serve me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, we would like to present you with this plaque uh, to Ronald Miguel in recognition for a lifetime of service to the town of Oxford, serving in the roles of police chief, town meeting moderator, MSCB 17 board of directors, and many more. You made a difference every day. The Oxford Board of Selectmen, Caldwell Jackson, Sharon Jackson, Floyd Bayer, Scott Hunter, and David Bannon Dillingham. Thank you very much, Ron, for your service. Thank you. It's easy when you work with a great bunch of people such as yourself. And good selectmen over the years, good town managers that we continue to have. It's very nice to see. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you, Roy.
Yes, so there, as far as tax acquired property, all but two parcels were um, paid within the 90 day window. The two parcels that were not paid, to the, there's a new state law enacted about over age 65. There's a couple extra steps that the town has to go through. So the town clerk and the uh, town attorney is working through those steps, and that'll be presented at the next meeting. So. You're going to have someone call me the one. Okay. I doubt about the property because you called me just for a kid. Yeah. Yeah, if it's the one I'm thinking of, that one did come in and pay for the same mark. So. No, no, this is the gentleman that owned the black property. Oh, okay.